Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 Series PLC first program. We will be creating our first Productivity 2000 Series PLC program. This will be done in Ladder Logic. The default physical I.O. and PLC task management will be discussed. Previously, we communicated to our P2000 PLC and automatically created the hardware configuration. We also set the hot swap feature of our physical inputs and output cards on the controller. We will now write our first PLC ladder logic program in our Productivity 2000 series controller. This will be the simple, this will be just a simple start stop circuit. We will download and then run the program monitoring, monitoring the ladder logic using the Productivity Suite software. So let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So currently up on my screen, we have our... Uh, we're currently offline to the controller. You can see that by the uh, description below here. And previously we configured the inputs and outputs on our P2000 PLC system. And default tags were assigned to each of the I.O. cards on the rack. So if we look at our uh, hardware configuration, then we can double click on here and you can see here are the controllers that we set up last time. This is all in our hardware configuration and we can look at our actual uh, simulator card by double clicking it. And when we do, you will see that we have our user tag names. Now, these are the default assignments for the eight point simulator input card. The switches are numbered one to eight and are assigned a user tag name. The tag names follow a specific format for discrete inputs and output points. So the first DI0 represents the DI represents the discrete input point. If it was a D0, it would be a discrete output point or MST, which is module status would be uh, things like blown fuses or air bits. The next one, the zero, uh, indicates the base group number. And the base group number with the CPU is always zero. The next number, the one, represents the base number. And the base number of the CPU is one. Next is your slot number, which is three. And if I move this over, you'll see that it's on slot number three, is our simulator card. And then the last one is the item number or the bit or the IO point of the unit itself. In this case here, number one, two to, to number eight, which represents those switches one to eight. So that's how the default assignment gets done on our Productivity 2000 controller. So if we just look at the um, output card, well, that's the same thing, but again, we have digital output the um, base unit, we have the, the rack one with next to the CPU, we have our slot location and we have our bit point. So that is how we read default tags in our CPU. Now we'll just close that down. We buy the X here. So that's what we did last time. And then what we also have in our controller is everything is a tag based system. So here we have a tag based. So we can double click here on the tag base. And you can see here we can actually turn on and off our tags to show. If we look at the discrete input points or discrete output points, you can see that here I have on my system one discrete output. We look at our inputs and we have discrete inputs. And these follow the same ones we just did or we just show. So that is our tag database. And what you'll notice is on our output, we have other options here, less forcible. Now forcible means that during the operation of the controller, we can actually turn on and off this bit and it will either stay on or stay off or forced either direction or either way. Um, independent of what the PLC program or the scan is doing to that controller. So it'll keep that point on a rock. So let's just turn on that one first forcible here. So now 
So we have our first output here, and that's one we're going to be programming itself. So again, we'll just close that down. So that is our tag database, and we'll we'll discuss more of that uh, later. Next, what we'll do is we'll look at our productivity task manage management, and that's this window right down here. And you can see this new task here is the same thing as this new task here. So how the productivity program is develop basically is a series of tasks that we have and sections that we can actually then program each of these sections actually have ladder logic code in them and you can see under the task we actually have um, five different uh, areas we have run first scan only that means that the code that i put in here will only run when it first powers up the cpu with power the next one here is the default one which is our new task uh, it runs every scan. So a typical scan that we will do for a PLC. Then we have one for run every second. So this is for not time critical information, such as calculating of, of uh, widgets or, or dividing or doing something like that. Then we have run when called. So we use a program instruction to actually call this logic law or this code when we need it. And then we have a disabled task. We'll put program in there. We will put a program in there when we don't want to uh, execute it or we disable that task itself. And the order in which we do this, we can select it from here. So for now, our task management controls all of our sequence of operation within this unit and all these as, as per tasks and these tasks are put in an order and each of these tasks will have uh, one or more rungs within them to execute and that consists of our program itself. So if we look at this, we're going to be programming in this new task. And this is by the way, the default uh, operation and over here to the right hand side, you'll see the instructions. So from the instructions, what we can do is we can look at our normally open contact and we also have a cursor. Now there's several different ways of moving this contact over to where that cursor is. Where our cursor is, we can just double click on it and that will pop up, pop up the contact as you can see here. Let's say cancel there. We can also take and click and hold and then drag that over to the location we want and it will do that. There are also quick keys. We cancel that. There are also quick keys that we can use. And if we look under the help, you'll see the, the uh, keyboard shortcuts or F9. That will bring up our quick keys. And you can see here that we can type in uh, normally open for normally open contact, normally closed. Or we also have our function keys, F2 for normally open, etc. So several different ways of actually um, doing uh, this logic. So let's just double click on that. And what we will enter is our first input. So that would be the I. And when we do, you'll notice that it automatically pops up with all of the input status. So we want the first simulator input, which is DI, and it's in the third slot, first one here. And then we'll just hit OK. So you notice that brings it back up here. Then what we want to do is draw a line down. So in order to draw a line down, we would do edit. And then we can do wire. And then down. But you also see there's a, a quick key. And in our case here, it's control down, which is a lot easier to actually do than go through the menu each time. So we hit that control down. To erase it, control shift and then back up again. So control down, we, we then put it in there or put the line down, then we can move over. And now let's put a, another normally open contact here and we'll use the first output. And the first output, this is the one we also allowed to be forcible. And we'll just hit okay. So, so far I have two, two rungs here. You'll notice that we have this little uh, diagram here on the left hand side that just means that the project has not been saved yet and there's indication down here below 
And remember, we're still offline to our controller. Next, we'll go through a normally closed uh, second contact. So D, I, we look for our third slot, second um, contact, we'll hit OK. And then finally, we'll look at our output and we'll look under coils and then you'll see out coil. Double click on that and we'll put the same output as we see here, our first output. And we'll say OK. So this is basically our program. So you see our first switch. We'll go through the normally closed here, turn that on. This then turns on activating this as a ceiling contact. So when I lose that input, it will still remain on until I energize the second switch. So that's my entire program. You'll see that again, I have this not saved yet. So what we'll do is hit the save button and that will save that program for us. So once we have our program saved, what we should do now is take a look at going online with our hardware. So we can either go online if we've done this before, or again, we can choose the CPU. It will come up with a series of, of ones that are here. We're going to use the ethernet one and we're just going to hit connect. What it's going to say is there are differences um, in the project in the PC workspace that are not in the CPU itself. Do you want to copy the project uh, from the CPU? So that would erase everything we've just done here. So we're going to say no to that. So now we are on line and you'll notice here at the product status is just saved, but the project project CPU status is out of date. And it's out of date until we actually transfer the project to the CPU. So that makes the both programs the exact same. And just before we do that, we can just take a look quickly at our hardware that we have here. And again, this is from last time. You'll see that we have our power supply, the P2 550 CPU. There we have our output and we're controlling that first output. We have our um, input card here and we have a simulator input card here with our series of switches that we are going to operate. So what we have to do now is just transfer this project uh, to the CPU. And that's going to ask us which type of transfer do you want to perform? Okay. Now there are two types that we can have. We can have runtime transfer. That means that the CPU will not stop executing the logic and we add, we hold the logic scan. We input our, our program and then allow it to continue operating. Or we go into stop mode, which the controller goes into stop. It stops executing, loads the program, and then waits to, for us to put it back into run mode. We're going to do a runtime transfer in this case here. And that's it. Now you'll notice that our CPU project status is up to date. Now we can actually look at this new task window that we have here and we can hit the monitor. What that will do is actually monitor our IO contacts that we see on our screen. And we can go back to the hardware. And if we turn on that first switch, you will see that it comes on here. It goes through a normally closed here and energize the output. The output then turns on the bottom one. If I turn that switch off, you will see that it maintains it's on because we have this ceiling contact here that allows it to continuously run. Now, there are other ways we can actually monitor this, this information as well. If we right click on that rung or click on the rung then right click, you can see we can have monitor and data view. And when we monitor data view, we'll say create a new new tab called uh, new task rungs uh, and it's first rung itself. Let's hit OK. Then if we go and scroll down to our application tools, you'll see data view right here. And it's also under your tools. You can look at data view. 
when we call it the data view, it looks like this. And you can see our tab that we just added looks like this. So you can see our output right now is on. If we go to the right hand side, we can actually look at the physical IO right here. So there's my first output and these are my input conditions. If I were to turn that off by energizing switch number two, you will see that it opens it up on my, in my logic and turns off that output. I'll turn off that input and now we're ready to start it again. Now remember also when we have to look at the tag database, we're allowed to force that output. If we force the output and we will turn it on, then we can write that and you can see that it creates a symbol here that we force that output to be on. And then when that output's on, you'll see on our, my ladder logic diagram, I have a symbol here that says that it's been forced on and that's my ceiling. It's the same contact, so it's forced on. If I try to reset it or stop it, you will see that it does not um, stop and there's no connection between the two so that my scan time does not affect it. Similarly, if I were to edit that, turn it off and force it, it turns it off and I can then try turning it on and my output does not turn on. So if you see this, it means that your logic and your PLC program is not being solved. And remember our logic solved from left to right, top to bottom. So that is our first program. It's a simple start stop. And, and to remove the force, all we do is unclick it and then write that um, edit again. Then you see we're back online and we, we started start it up again. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free eBooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.